that's the thing is people think that that's all they know and that's all they're going to play in and that's that's what's safe for them you know but i always come in with the idea that you know i want to build something that can be replaced i want my job to be replaced not by someone else but just in general that the whole function doesn't rely on me and welcome back it's lynn padetti here helping you to achieve time freedom so that you have more time for self family business and life now in this video you're going to meet richard Fu, my operations manager who i've learned so much about scaling my business now it's not really about just financial scaling it's about scaling having more time and delegating and freeing me up instead of being a bottleneck in my business so when he came on board he basically said lynn you are the one that's bottlenecking because you're not even delegating effectively now, I thought I already had a team, so I thought I was delegating well, but not really. So in this video, you're going to learn how to delegate effectively so that you free yourself up from being the bottleneck and you will also empower your team as well. Hi, everybody, and welcome back. It's Lynn here. And today I brought back Richard Fu, my operations manager, to talk us through about how to manage your team effectively and especially in terms of delegating. Because I used to be proud at how I delegate. I was able to like hire all these people, give them all these tasks and felt like, you know, I was the queen of the world, but I actually was still stuck in the business. So this is where Richard's going to blow you away with his delegation skills. So welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Lynn. Good to be back. Hopefully it does blow your minds, right? Well, I'm going to share here today and hopefully we get some good action tips for you guys to go and take forward from here. Yes. So let's take back even the real case scenario where when you stepped into the business and I already had like, I don't know, five, six admin girls and a lot of VAs. And yet, what did you see in terms of my management skill set, <laughs> my <laughs> leadership skills? <laughs> <laughs> Aside from Lynn always coming up with brand new ideas, right? What we call the shiny object syndrome. I was like, look at that new thing there. Oh, look at that, right? But the thing I noticed most, Lynn, that was the reason why you are still like in the business every day doing the operations, even though you had people to do it for you. What I noticed the most was that you were trapped being the decision maker. You know, what people misunderstand i think lynn when it comes to delegating is i'm gonna delegate you a task yeah and that's what people try and get vas for it's like oh i got so many tasks i'm gonna get a va to do it yeah that doesn't actually give you time delegating the task of doing something is not the time maker the time maker is when you're able to delegate them the decision because you can delegate the task anyone can do the task what happens is you know, you train them up to become in a place where they're dependent on you. They're, they're afraid of making a decision. And because that's all you've done, you know, and they get trained up to be like, hey, I did this, Lynn, is this okay? Then it's on you to make a decision on it. That's where entrepreneurs and managers, right, get stuck thinking that, you know, they find someone, they try to get more time for themselves, but they just don't find that they have the time because they're the bottleneck. Yeah. What do you think the thing that we tell ourselves that innate that makes us do that so like I could think of one thing is where I feel like if I just explain it if I just tell them what to do it's faster right that's mm -hmm. one limiting belief but what other things do you think of that makes us do that yeah so that you have that one limiting belief of oh, I'll just tell you the answer yeah then there's the other one that I see a lot of is and this is not always conscious right they don't, might not know it it's Sometimes it's embedded in us subconsciously and it's, it's a form of control. Yeah, it's a, it's a feeling of some people like the feeling of being important, right? Like Tony Robbins has, you know, the six human needs. One of them is significance. We want to feel significant. So for me to feel significant in an organization, I want to hold power or I want to feel important. So someone has to come to me for something. And that's something we do often as leaders, right? Is I'm a leader, I need to feel important. And it may come from a lack of somewhere sometimes as well. And that's why you see in bigger organizations, they work in silos. They don't want to work together because they're like, if John knows what I'm doing and knows it as well, then that means I could lose my job. I'm not important anymore. But you know, with my philosophy, it's like, it's collaboration. I'm like, the whole idea is everyone offers something here and you know, you need to share that information. So then the organization can be more efficient yeah, and actually grow quicker that way rather than being stemmed by other people's self-interest. So yeah. it's that power 
thing, Lynn. That is huge, and I agree with you. Whereas I think that if you just always look at how best to use your strength, because if you hired someone else to do that, take over that, then it's not about you doing nothing and worry that your job's lost. It's about what else are you going to do. It gives you an opportunity to even work on the things that you truly love to do and strong at, which will impact the business positively. Yeah, yeah. and like, look, that's the thing is people. Think that that's all they know, and that's all they're going to play in, and that's that's what's safe for them, you know. But I always come in with the idea that you know I want to build something that can be replaced. I want my job to be replaced, not by someone else, but just in general that the whole function doesn't rely on me. Yes. And that's what you need to be. People say they want that, but then they take actions that don't align with that. Yeah. That philosophy, and you know that's one of the big things here. And so we we spend a lot of time. Working on empowering, and this is a, a buzzword, right? Empowering people to make decisions, but it's actually like focusing on you know, cultivating within them that self belief for themselves, and they can make the right decision for the business. Yeah, and I think the other limiting belief is like, but I like doing this kind of stuff. <laughs> and they don't realize, especially if you're a small business owner, and if you were sick one day, if you really need to go on holidays. Like if you don't learn to delegate effectively, then your business crumbles. Or if you are a manager of a company and you want everything to be on your shoulders, well, when you are not around, the whole business will feel the pain. And if anything, the whole blame is going to be on you. Yeah, and I remember then when we talked about it, you're like, I thought I was I really enjoyed project management, right? <laughs> and you said that, and then it wasn't until we took it away from you that you saw. The people you did hire can actually do it better than you if you gave them that space, that time to step in. And then you realize, actually, I wasn't really that good, and I really didn't like it that much. That is such an amazing thing that I had no idea about until it happened to me. So we're only as good as what we know we're good at. So I used to say I love project management, I love recruitment, all these things. But once I free up that role, I was busy doing something new, which I had more fun in. And then, like you said, I realized that someone else can do better. But then I've evolved now to where I love content creation. Now I would never been able to get into the space of content creation if I was still stuck back there. So don't think you know yourself yet. Is the tip here, right? It's like you are still discovering your purpose, your vision, your strength, your passion. You actually don't know you as much as you think you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So okay, now it comes down to okay, fine. I'm gonna delegate, right? So what would be, I guess, some of the hurdles that they would have when they first delegate? Well, it always starts off with what do I delegate first? A lot of people don't know what it is that they're trying to do or what they're even doing in the first place. You know, and I'll share this on the screen. Actually,、yes. this might be a good thing to show.、Mm-hmm. Right? Is you know, this is. Not not convenient in the sense that you know I didn't plan this. It was actually we're building a, a deck, right? And it comes from this guy called Warry Baden, right? And he talks about being a multiplier. It's about productivity. It's a great book. He's called Procrastinating Purpose. Check it out, right? And you know what he dispels here for us in the world you know, through his book is usually when you're trying to delegate, right? You have a bunch of tasks. You have to pick and you have to choose where you spend your time. And what we've all probably been taught is measure based on what's urgent versus what's important, right? So then you know whatever's down here that's not urgent, not important, you you do it eventually, maybe unless you delete it, yeah. And then there's the not so important but urgent stuff that you got to do soon. Then there's important stuff that isn't so urgent. You might be like, oh, kind of got to do that more soon, right? <laughs> and then you got the high urgent, the important and very important stuff that is like got to do it now, right? And We get trained up as business owners, as leaders, to get stuck in this what we call urgency addiction, where we're only doing what's urgent and what's important. So everything else, we think we can probably just give it away and do it, give it to someone else. The challenge is using just only urgency and importance to measure and decide what to give out isn't a good factor when you're hiring people and you're trying to outsource and get more stuff done. And what he says is, this is what actually happens is. You know, you go from being messy and all over the place to now being good prioritizer, right? But when you're prioritizing, it doesn't actually create more time. Like, right? What he actually does is just rejigging your to-do list, and now you're just a juggler. So you got, you still got all this stuff to do, but now you just know what to do first. It's not actually like outsourcing. 
Yeah. And so you just become very good at juggling all the things、yeah. that you do. Yeah. But in order to delegate out well, you need to think about the third item, right? And that's really a question of how long will it matter? And that's where he talks about significance, right? Into the chart. And the significance is you have to ask yourself, you know, how long will it matter? How long does this task matter? Like, is this going to be a repeating task? Is this something I always do every day, every month, every week, right? And if it's, Frequent, then it's worth thinking about. Okay, I should invest time to just delegate it out now, right? And that will save me more time. And so, some people don't know how to start delegating. So then it's like, what do I give out? And that's why we always recommend do a time study sheet, right? And you know, there's a template for this. Link can share it later. Is really you want to highlight every half hour, put an alarm on your phone, bang, it goes off, and you write for that last half hour. What was I focused on? What was I doing? You know, so there's like an audit, and it makes it easier for people to see at a glance what's happening in a week, right? Maybe two weeks, right? So they can get a good average on it as well. And what I always recommend is put in the tasks that you're working on in the work inside it, right? So you can see in here, there's little tasks I put in there, and then that gives you a good snapshot of what's happening. Yeah.、Mm -hmm. Then once you get a list of tasks, you have this list of tasks here of what things that you normally do on a weekly basis. And then you go through the focus funnel method, and the focus funnel is where you dump all these tasks up the top, and you figure out what can I eliminate. And you know, some of it is like rubbish stuff, like maybe it's Netflix, right? Maybe it's like sleeping or whatever, right?、And、you want to eliminate certain tasks that aren't beneficial to where you want to get towards. Then you got to look through which tasks could you automate, and if you don't know what you can automate, it's okay. You can skip that step because that takes a bit of research as well to look at that. Then you can only then look at okay, what tasks do I do that I can delegate out that I can give to someone else? And the real question you ask yourself in this part is, can I teach someone who has roughly no idea how to do it, right? In the first place, can is it teachable to them? Right, and that's what I usually ask myself: is if it is teachable, then it, I can most likely delegate it. If it's somewhat teachable, it means maybe they need more experience, right? And if it's not, then it comes down to this part where it comes down to me. And then this is the important part of that. Once you figure out what you're focusing on, is what do I concentrate on versus what I procrastinate and do later? Yeah. And you purposely procrastinate on that because you're like, okay, I know this is important, but I don't need to do it now. So then you just chuck it back up to the top later, figure it out.、Mm -hmm. And that's really like the method of delegating here. That is, come、yes. up with the task list and then go through this funnel. Okay.、Yeah. So, assuming I have decided that I am going to delegate this bunch of social media tasks, right? Then, how do I ensure that I am not the bottleneck and always checking in the work and still being the project manager of it, like getting it done? But my problem back then, as you saw, was I was making sure that things get done right and approved before I could go on, and I was stuck in it. Yeah, like especially at the start, you're going to have to be there. You're going to have to observe it. You're going to have to make sure that they understand how to do it the way you want it done. You know, and then you got to check. So that's where we usually talk about this feedback loop. Yeah, and I'll share this again、mm -hmm. here. Right, is what you're saying, Lynn, is like you know you get them to take an action. What you do then next is you want to observe, which is what you're saying. You're measuring, you're observing how they're doing it, and you give feedback. Yeah, like oh, this thing could be different, da 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 da. And then not only that, you don't stop at the feedback. You you go forward to the next step of tweaking the system. Yeah, and when you tweak the system, then they can go and retake the new action with the new system with the new tweaks. There is no way to proof it whereby you just do it once and that's it, right? And、yes. then you share it with them, and it's game over. No, it's、yeah. you do it first, you observe it, and this doesn't mean you just do one cycle of it. Sometimes you have to keep doing it. For till you feel comfortable enough that they can take it, and that's when you training up your VA to one do the task,、yeah. or whether your team members right training them up so that they can do the tasks.、Yes. But you you can't delegate decisions that early on then because it'll confuse them. Yes. Oh, but I'm meant to do this and this and this, and then you know the decisions they have to ask you. And that's okay then to get them up to speed on it.、Yeah? Yes. But after you a while, when I say a while, it's like. Depends on the task. You start noticing that they can handle the task by themselves. Then they'll start coming to you with questions of, "Hey, this thing came through. What do we do?" Yeah, and that's when you shift. 
that's when you shift to be like, okay, so what we're changing up to is now that you know how to do the task and well, I want you to now, if you ever come across a problem, come and I'm okay to guide you through it. I'm not going to give you the answer anymore. Yeah, and you have to prepare them. Otherwise, you just throw them and they're like, oh, you always gave me the answer. Yeah. Yes. And so you prepare them saying, what I want you to do is go Google, go YouTube, your answer most likely might be there. If not, you can ask me, but I want you to approach it with a solution in mind or do some research before you come to me, right? And then you put caveats on it to be like, obviously you don't spend a day doing research, right? On it, but take 20 minutes or whatever it is, figure out how you would want to do it if I wasn't here. And you can get them to ask themselves, like, look, best question to ask yourself is, if I'm not here, what would you do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then they'll come up with something. And yeah, they come up to you and they're like, hey, look, here's this. And then I don't know what to do here. And if you flip and you go, so what would you want to do? You know, sometimes you're going to get that default answer of, I don't know. Yeah. That I don't know, I interpret as it's really, I can't be bothered to think. Yes. You got to hold strong here, right? And you're going to be like, okay, let's assume in another universe, that you do know the answer, what would it be? Yep. And yeah. if the mistake is okay, because I think sometimes people are afraid to be responsible for the outcome, right? Yeah. And so whether I've worked with Filipino or even Australian people, I find that they naturally default to asking permission. Like, hey, what do you want me to do with this? You mentioned that I'm supposed to do this, but how do you want to do it? They yeah. think that they're being obedient and polite by giving you your authority. But if you naturally default to accepting that, you know, yes, I am the boss and I will tell you, then you're actually not training them to empower them, to actually build their confidence now. So actually, not down into the feedback part, I actually, from what I've learned from you, I have now doing a lot more earlier. So let's just say I'm working with some video editors and yes, I've given them the task and I realized that I didn't give them the exact instruction branding guide, let's say. Now I've given the branding guide and yet, two videos looks different. One is this, one is that. Now, naturally as a manager, I would be like, hey, can you make the change on this, make a change on that? Because I was doing an agency for many, many years and I was pretty much that project managing going, oh, make all these changes, bring it back to the client. Oh, actually we noticed all this. Versus now I'm going, hang on, can we have a meeting? And I like to understand what do you see different between this video and this video and really take them through their own process and see if they even notice what they did wrong. Because our brain becomes lazy if someone else is telling us where the problem is. And I'm really proud, I'm excited because I can't wait to have that coaching session coming up. Even someone that's Australian actually going, okay, you know, I like to understand, do you see it different? Why do you think it's wrong? And, you know, can you show me what the branding guy is? And that takes patience. And, but I know that it's going to be so much more rewarding. And even till now, I have to catch myself because I just started a new company and one of the local girls, here I'm saying is it's not just a Filipino VA. A local girl just said to me, like, you said you wanted this, can you tell me what you want in whatever way? But with her capability and her skill set, I know she's like, definitely able to do it but I somehow almost about to do it I was almost saying okay I'll get back to you later but then I thought hang on delete delete what I was about to say and said could you please come up with your suggestions and I'll check your work and I know that that this is going to turn out it's going to save me so much time it's going to build her confidence because she keeps getting things more right than she thinks she can and then in the future I've delegated this whole like as in almost the idea generation. If I want something, you come up with the idea and then you do it for me. So mm. thank you, Richard. In the- <laughs> it's all right, man. it's all right. And you said an important part, it's about patience. And you say it's fun. When you're in it, it's not fun sometimes, you know, in the coaching part and they don't get it and then they're confused. And so it's, it's not an easy process, right? And you have to have buy-in from both sides of the boss and the subordinate, the employee, right? To do it and a team member. So it's hard at that point in time when you're fighting up against the wall. And I will tell you right now, you probably experience it. It's like, they'll give up. They'll give up and like, just tell me what you want. Just tell me what you want, right? And then, and then you still have to hold strong to be like, um, we're not doing this way because it's not going to help you in the future. You mm-hmm. know, I want you to step up and do all these things. And this is why. So give me your thoughts. If it doesn't matter if you get it wrong, I will correct you and guide you through. Right? Yeah. One by is what you're saying is they're afraid to make a decision. 
you let them know if they make a wrong decision, it's okay. Yeah. Yes. That one, we'll go through it and we'll make sure it's right. Even if it ends up being wrong in the other case, right? We'll fix it. You know, yes. that's literally, I think one of the most important things I would say to the team here is, look, and sometimes as the leader, the boss, you don't know what the right answer is. I go, I don't know what the right answer is, but whatever you want to do, we'll go do it. And look, if it ends up being wrong, it's okay, we'll fix it. You know, I don't even know how we're going to fix it either, but it's giving them that belief that they're supported, you know, and if they don't have that, they're not going to step up to make that decision for you. Yeah, that's the key thing because I think as a business owner or someone senior, you think you've got the best answers and the best ideas. Everyone should listen to you, which okay, I'm guilty of that. But when I've allowed and empowered the team and you come up with some amazing things, even from the VAs, I was like, wow, like I would never have been able to do that. And plus, I don't even have time to do all that now. So it actually can surprise you at what you think you know of yourself. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Before we end, I love for you to explain Rory Vaden's times 30 rule, because when it comes down to delegation, I think if you don't set the expectation right, you're going to go give up like, oh, this person is just wait, taking way too long. I might as well do it. You get impatient with it. So I love this X30 rule that now I have a better understanding and kind of context behind the length of time it will take. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's a very important rule. In his book, he talks about, you know, 30x rule. And this is the thing, right, Lynn, is a lot of people underestimate or undervalue how long it actually takes to train someone in a task. And so in his method, he believes that in order to train someone up, and I've seen this, right, for myself, is it takes 30 times longer than you doing it. And that might seem absurd, crazy, weird, right? But it's not about you showing them how to do it. It's about the feedback loop. It's about you watching them do it, then guide, then correcting them, then tweaking the thing. And then it's not like you just do it once and, and show them that five minute step. And that's what people get caught up on is, oh, it should only take five minutes. And so for me to teach them to do it in five minutes, it should be that, you know, but no, it's like, yeah, I'm sure for you to get to the five minute mark, you didn't start at five minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, it took you time to get to a point where you can do all those tasks in that quick amount of time. But we forget that. We forget the journey that we took to get there, yet we expect someone that we're hiring to just be there straight up, you know? And so that's why he says it's a 30X rule that it takes someone to get to that point. And I'm going to share here real quick on the screen because I actually just got the slides. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes. Oops, let me go back, right? Is you have to think of it in this sense, you know? So some people would be like, oh, what? I got to spend 150 minutes, two and a half hours to train someone to do something for five minutes. That's stupid, right? Why would I do that? But what's the alternative? Look over here, right? In one year, if you continue doing it yourself, it's, and you know, we assume 250 working days, you know, you take out weekends, you take out some public holidays. It's about 250 days a year. And you know, you take five minutes each day to do it. It's going to take you, 1,250 minutes per year to do it, right? That's like what, 20 hours, right? Mm -hmm. Per year. But if you get someone else to do it, you're gonna invest 150 minutes in the short period. It can't be in the one day, but it's more like, you know, over probably like a month to get them to do the five minute task properly the way you want it done. Then you look at your return of time investment, it's, you know, versus doing it yourself, you invest 150 so it's you know 1250 minus 150 you get you're saving this much time per year but that's just one year not to mention yeah. If yeah. like i said like years, yeah. 19 hours per year you're saving by not doing this five minute task every year mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that this is where the easy trap is because it's only five minutes. You know, you think it's only five minutes and then you're just still caught in the same race. And, you know, it's not about time that we're poor. It's now the energy, the stress, the effect on your family, the effect on your mental health. And it's just not doable. You get burnt out. And I just feel like sometimes there's an analogy of a frog I think uh, Brian Tracy said or something where the frog, it gets boiled okay. slowly and it doesn't know until it got burnt because it was such a slow little pain that yeah. eventually it died because it was just small. And so I think sometimes unless we do something, it's not urgent, but it's quite important. And if you don't do it now, you will 
burnout in the end before you know it. It's not even that it's important, it's, it's that it's significant, right? And that's, significant, the, that's the word. Like, people don't think about in the future, like you said, yes, it looks like the task takes five minutes, but how long does it take you to stop to go do it? How long does it take you to get restarted on the other tasks you were doing before? For some people, it takes more than five minutes because maybe it's something you don't like doing, right? Yeah. And so that's the important part here. People don't think about those other side effects of what you're doing. And literally the way I figure it out is if I'm doing something for more than like three or four times in a row and it's quite frequent, then I'm like, surely there has to be a way for me to yeah. get this done elsewhere, right? Whether automation or delegation. Yes. Yeah. And then you then learn something new for yourself that will impact your business. Like right now I'm learning a lot about YouTube marketing, take it to another level. And it humbled me because it made me go, oh my God, it's like, I'm so slow in this task. And yet I know that this is what it's like to be new into a job, even though as experienced and smart as I thought I am, learning something new still takes so much time. But I know that once I get it, it's going to be like a piece of cake. But I needed to remind myself that if I hire someone to do what I'm just doing in my own process, then I need to be just as patient as well. So yeah. Thank you so much for the tips on delegation. You've changed my life and I know that you will change all the people listening to this as well. No worries, Lynn. So there you go. There are plenty of tips in there for you to manage your team more effectively because at the end of the day, without an effective team, you don't have a business because you might be able to hire so many people, but if they're not empowered, they're not engaged, they're not happy, they're going to create stress. And if you are not delegating properly, then you will create the stress that's going to make your business not viable. Now, if you want more content like this and even more custom content to suit your situation, then I do would like to invite you to productize kit so this is a community that i've created to really provide you with the knowledge and experience that my team and i and other experts have in the field of scaling a business and we will share with you more of these tips through our live coaching where you can ask q a live or you can ask questions at any time and we can create these amazing videos for you to learn from it's not intensive it's not like every day there's homework but it is every week you feel like you're learning something new and that you have a supportive community to help you grow your business so do check out productize kit but of course if you like to watch more content about how to scale your business there's more videos here but before you go I'd love to hear in the comments below what is the one significant task that you would like to outsource this week let me know in the comments below bye